Hello students, welcome you all to this video of investment management second part. In the first part we have discussed the introduction, half of the introduction of the subject investment management. There we have studied, discussed about the meaning of the term investment, types of investment, then investment process and uh, differences between speculation and investment. We have discussed about the factors to be considered for taking investment decision. We have discussed what are the sources of getting the information. So these are the parts we have covered up in the first video. In this second video, we will cover up the remaining half of the part of this introduction. In this video, we are going to discuss about the concept and measurement of returns. A return is the ultimate objective of any investor. The first factor to be considered while making the investment is return. Return is the benefit to which the investor will get on making his investment. So, for example, a person has purchased a debenture for Rs. 100 at the beginning of the year. At the end of the year, he got an interest of 10 rupees. 10 rupees is the interest he got. At the end of the year, when he sells the debenture in the market, he fetched to 105. So he has purchased the debenture for 100 rupees. At the end of the year, he got 10 rupees as interest. And while selling the debenture, he got 105. The total return he got is 15 rupees. 10 rupees is the interest and 5 rupees is the capital appreciation. So total 15 rupees he got on his investment of 100 rupees. The so percentage terms the return comes to 15%. He got 15 rupees profit on his investment of 100 rupees. So 15 by 100 into 100 you will get 15%. This is called the return. And every investor must know how to calculate the return. There are different methods of calculating the return. First of all, the returns are classified into multiple period return and single period return. Multiple period return means we are calculating the average return, whether the average return of the past few years or the average return which we expect in future. So we calculate the average. The average can be calculated either by applying arithmetic mean or geometric mean. There are different methods of calculating the average return for multiple period returns. Second is single period return. Single period return means we are calculating the return only for one year. So it may be ex post return or ex ante return. Ex post return means past returns. We are having the returns of the past few years. For example, ABC company. The company has earned a profit of different amounts in, uh, I mean, different past years. We calculate simple average or weighted average. So this is called ex post returns, past returns. Pahle ke years mein jo return calculate kiya gaya hai kiya hai, uska average nikalenge to ex post return bolenge. Ex ante return, ex ante return means future returns. The returns which we expect to get in future, but future is uncertain. So whenever there is uncertainty, we use the term probability. So we apply the probability for expected return of the future and this is called ex ante return. Simply ex post return means past returns. There we calculate the average return and ex ante return means the future return which we expect to get in future and it is called expected return. So this is about returns. So we have discussed about the concept and measurement of return, single period ex post ex ante. Now we discuss about the risk. An investor must not only consider the return but also the investor must consider the risk. Risk means the variability of returns from the average return or expected return. The actual return kitana deviate hora expected return se usko kete risk. Agar variability zyada hai. So if risk is more, if variability is less, then the risk will be less. So the variability of return is called risk. And already we know there is a relationship, direct relationship between risk and return. Higher the risk, higher will be the return. Lower the risk, lower will be the return. So one point is we cannot completely ignore the risk. It is highly impossible. 
nobody can ignore the risk because investment requires commitment of funds at present and expecting the future uh, expecting the returns in future and future is completely uncertain whenever there is uncertainty there is risk attached so an investor should be clear in his mind regarding how much risk he is taking how much risk he he can he should take so that is all about the meaning of the term risk then uh, what are the different types of risk so broadly the sources from which the risk emanates there are many sources risk jo aata hai kai jagah se risk aata hai so we will dis we will discuss about the sources as business risk first of all the risk of the business every business will encounter a number of uncertain situations so the business will incur loss the in the business will get the profit from this risky opportunities and threats so business risk arises due to poor business performance agar ek business ka performance sahi nahi hai business has taken wrong the management has taken wrong decisions investment decisions regarding financing decisions marketing decisions to agar poor performance agar business ka honga to business ko risk honga business ko loss ho sakta to this is called business risk this may arise due to a number of factors like improper utilization of resources wrong management policies etc so this type of risk attached to the business is called business interest rate risk the risk which is arising due to the fluctuation in the interest rate in the market example if the interest rate in the market increases the value of fixed income securities will decrease एक कंपनी है कंपनी के डिबेंजर्स है डिबेंजर्स को फिक्स्ड इनकम सिक्योरिटी बोलेंगे तो अगर ये डिबेंजर्स के ऊपर एक 10 परसेंट रेट ऑफ इंटरेस्ट है लेकिन मार्केट रेट ऑफ इंटरेस्ट अब बढ़ गया 15 परसेंट हो गया तो द वैल्यू ऑफ दिस डिबेंजर्स विल कम डाउन द वैल्यू ऑफ डिबेंजर्स विल कम डाउन फेस वैल्यू हंड्रेड रुपीज का है मार्केट में एटी रुपीज सेवेंटी रुपीज में बिकेगा क्यों बिकॉज द रेट ऑफ इंटरेस्ट कैरिंग दिस डिबेंजर इज ओनली टेन परसेंट वेर एज द मार्केट रेट ऑफ इंटरेस्ट इज फिफ्टीन इसका रिवर्स भी हो सकता इफ द मार्केट रेट ऑफ इंटरेस्ट हैज फॉल डाउन देन द वैल्यू ऑफ दिस फिक्स्ड इनकम सिक्योरिटी विल इंक्रीज सो देर इज ऑलवेज रिस्क अटैच टू विद द कंपनी नॉट ओनली द फिक्स्ड इनकम सिक्योरिटी बट आल्सो द वेरिएबल इनकम सिक्योरिटी लाइक इक्विटी द वैल्यू ऑफ इक्विटी विल गेट अफेक्टेड ड्यू टू द चेंजेस इन द इंटरेस्ट रेट्स इन द मार्केट मार्केट में जैसा जैसा इंटरेस्ट रेट चेंज होता गया बिजनेस को रिस्क है इसको इंटरेस्ट रेट रिस्क कहते हैं थर्ड वन मार्केट रिस्क मार्केट द प्राइसेस ऑफ शेयर्स एंड सिक्योरिटीज इन द मार्केट नॉट ओनली डिपेंड्स ऑन द परफॉर्मेंस ऑफ द कंपनी बट आल्सो ऑन द सेंटिमेंट्स ऑफ द इन्वेस्टर्स पोटेंशियल इन्वेस्टर्स सेंटिमेंट्स ऑफ द पीपल द सेंटिमेंट्स ऑफ द पीपल विल नॉट बी सेम ऑलवेज समटाइम्स द इन्वेस्टर्स विल बी बुलिश समटाइम्स दे मे बी बियरिश सो द मार्केट प्राइस ऑफ शेयर not only affects not only depends on the performance of the company not only depends on the interest rate but also on the market market related factors so a business is operating in the market so a number of forces like government policies is there interest rate is there inflation rates are there sentiments of the investors are there all these will play an important role in affecting the market price of shares so this is called market risk but another method of classifying the risk is systematic risk and unsystematic risk the systematic risk is the risk which emanates from the market market related risk is called systematic risk it is non diversifiable because even after diversifying the risk will not get reduced example the risk attached with the business from the market like government policies inflation money in circulation interest rates which are not controllable by the action of the company aisa risk jo market se create ho raha hai isko systematic risk kehte hain to how the investor can be able to manage to control this uh, systematic risk by using the beta concept in the coming videos we'll discuss more about this beta by using this beta concept the investor can be able to control or manage the systematic risk it is called non diversifiable risk 
because even by diversifying the systematic risk cannot get decreased second type of risk is unsystematic risk the risk which is attached with the company decisions company ke decisions se jo risk arise ho raha hai usko unsystematic risk kehte hain because all the company uh, the internal risk of all the companies will not be same company ka risk arise hota hai on account of decisions of the company on account of uh, proper utilization of resources of the company to company ke apne actions se jo risk ho raha hai usko kehte unsystematic risk this unsystematic risk can be controlled or managed by diversification so an investor can reduce this unsystematic risk by making diversification in his investment portfolio so that's why it is called diversifiable risk now we discuss about the measurement of risk how to measure the risk so far we are clear about the return and risk but how to calculate the risk the common method of calculating the risk is through variance and root of variance that is standard deviation standard deviation is a statistical measure of finding out the dispersion of the values from the average average values se dusre values kaisa diverse ho rahe disperse ho rahe wo measure ko kehte hain standard deviation so we calculate the standard deviation of the different securities to calculate the measure to find out the measure higher the standard deviation more is the variance more is the risk lower the standard deviation less is the risk so the most commonly used measure of calculating the risk is standard deviation next comes to approaches to investment analysis there are different approaches to investment analysis the most important one are uh, fundamental analysis and technical analysis <coughs> fundamental and technical analysis are the two approaches for analyzing the investment first of all fundamental analyst analysis is based on the premise that the price of a share is based on the benefits which a shareholder expects in future in the form of dividends the fundamental analysis says the market price of share the investor will put the market price of share on the basis of discounting the future benefit the shareholder will get from the dividends from the dividends so the value of the share depends on how much the investor expects the dividend in future by discounting that benefit which he gets in future he can be able to get the value of the share so fundamental analyst ye keh raha hai ke the value of the share depends on the performance of the company अगर एक कंपनी अच्छा परफॉर्म करेगी अच्छा प्रॉफिट अर्न करेगी तो उसका डिविडेंड ज्यादा होगा जब एक्सपेक्ट ये कर रहे हैं कि फ्यूचर में डिविडेंड ज्यादा होगा तो फ्यूचर डिविडेंड को डिस्काउंटिंग करके प्रेजेंट वैल्यू हम मालूम कर सकते हैं सो सिंपली वी कैन से द फंडामेंटल एनालिस्ट से प्रेजेंट मार्केट वैल्यू ऑफ द कंपनी द प्रेजेंट मार्केट वैल्यू ऑफ शेयर ऑफ द कंपनी डिपेंड्स ऑन द परफॉर्मेंस ऑफ द कंपनी डिपेंड्स ऑन द परफॉर्मेंस ऑफ द कंपनी कंपनी अच्छा चलेंगी तो मार्केट प्राइस ऑफ शेयर शेयर बढ़ेगा कंपनी के परफॉर्मेंस के ऊपर मार्केट प्राइस ऑफ शेयर डिपेंड करेगा सो ए फंडामेंटल वैल्यू और द इंट्रेंसिक वैल्यू द फंडामेंटल वैल्यू ऑफ द शेयर और इंट्रेंसिक वैल्यू ऑफ द शेयर इज द प्रेजेंट वैल्यू ऑफ एक्सपेक्टेड फ्यूचर अर्निंग्स और एक्सपेक्टेड फ्यूचर डिविडेंड्स तो हाउ दिस फंडामेंटल एनालिसिस विल बी हेल्पफुल टू द इन्वेस्टर the investor will calculate the intrinsic value or fundamental value of the share now the investor will compare this fundamental or intrinsic value with the market price of the share currently prevailing market price if the market price is lower than the intrinsic value the share is called underpriced in the market when the share is underpriced it's a time to buy the share अब एक कंपनी का शेयर है मैं कैलकुलेट करा उसका इंट्रेंसिक वैल्यू उसका इंट्रेंसिक वैल्यू वन ट्वेंटी रुपीज आ रहा है द इंट्रेंसिक वैल्यू फंडामेंटल वैल्यू ऑफ द शेयर इज वन ट्वेंटी बट इन द मार्केट इट इज बीइंग सोल्ड बॉट एंड सोल्ड एट हंड्रेड रुपीज तो इट इज कॉल्ड अंडरप्राइज इन द मार्केट सो इट इज द टाइम टू बाय द शेयर अब यह टाइम ऐसा चल रहा है कि मार्केट में से शेयर खरीद लेना क्योंकि जिसका वैल्यू वन होना चाहिए मार्केट में हंड्रेड रुपीज में बिक रहा है सो सिमिलरली If the market price of share is more than the intrinsic value, 
if we calculate the intrinsic value it is coming to 120 but in the market it is being sold for rupees 150 so it is overpriced in the market so the investors should sell away the shares in the market because it is overpriced in the market in this way fundamental analysis is uh, consists of finding out the intrinsic value of the share to compare this intrinsic value with the present market value to take the decision whether to buy hold or sell the shares so fundamental belief fundamental analysts believe that the stock prices are reflection of the intrinsic value of the common stock now the second uh, technique is technical analysis it's completely opposite the technical analysis says the market price of share does not depend on the does not depend on the performance of the company it depends on the past prices the present price of the market the present price of share depends on the movement of the past prices in other words we can say technical analysis is the examination of past price movements to forecast the future price movements the previous years may market price of share kya chal raha tha usko study karke hum expect karenge ke what would be the price now and what would be the price in future the past prices will be taken as a standard or benchmark to find out the future prices of share technical analysis analysts are sometimes called chartists because they depend on charts the technical analysts will draw the charts to predict what would be the price of share in future so this technical analysis is mostly applied for stocks, commodities, futures or any tradable instruments where price is influenced by the demand and supply. Market mein jo price chalta hai, wo due to the interaction of demand and supply. So this technical analyst says the market prices are 80% psychological whereas 20% logical. So market depend karta psychology ke upar. So 80% market prices depend on psychology, psychology of the investors and only 20% on logical. Whereas fundamental analysis are entirely different. They says the market price is 80% logical and only 20% psychological. This is the contention between uh, fundamental analysis and technical analysis. Now we will come to the next topic called efficient market hypothesis efficient market hypothesis so what do you mean by efficient market market efficiency implies that all information is immediately discounted immediately discounted by the investors and reflected in the share prices in the stock market market efficiency ye bol rahi hai ke pura information complete information is freely available and immediately discounted by all the investors and it is reflected in the prices of the shares. Matlab ye hai ke market mein jitne inform, uh, investors hai, sub investors ko sare ka sara information malum hai. Every information, whether it is uh, publicly declared information or inside information, every information is freely available to all the investors. When the complete information is available to the, all the inf investors, they will discount it and it will be reflected in the market price of the stock no one has an information edge koi bhi aisa ek investor nahi hai jisko information zyada hone ki wajah se he will earn above normal returns har ek ke returns normal sab jitne investors hai sabko information barabar hai to sab ke returns normal honge koi bhi aadmi ko zyada information ki wajah se zyada return nahi milega sabko barabar return milega in ideal efficient market everyone knows all possible known information simultaneously every investor will behave rationally har koi investor rational rahega sab ko equal information sab sahi decision lenge but human beings are what they are this rarely happens in real practice kyunki human nature aisa hai ki sab ke paas ek jaisa information sab equal earnings nahi kar sakte to definitely this efficient market hypothesis is only a theoretical phenomena, theoretical concept. In reality, definitely some people will have more information, some people will have less information. Some people will earn more profits, some people will earn less profits. 
So it is uh, in an efficient market, all relevant information is reflected in the current stock price. Information cannot be used to obtain excess return. Information ko use karke zyada return nahi earn kar sakte kyunki sab ka information equal hai. This is about efficient market hypothesis. Now forms of market efficiency. Forms of efficient market hypothesis. Pharma, he has explained that efficient market hypothesis will have different forms. The first form is weakly efficient market. In this weakly efficient market, past prices cannot be used to predict the future prices. So efficient, weakly efficient market ye keh raha hai ke current prices will not have any relationship with the past prices. The past prices cannot be used to predict the future prices. The future prices are completely independent of the past. This weekly for weekly efficient market is based on random walk theory. According to random walk theory, every next step will be completely independent of the past steps. So this in this market, it's a market in which past prices do not provide any insight into the future prices. So this is the oldest statement of hypothesis, which means that market is weakly efficient. A major assertion of this weak form of market hypothesis is that successive prices are completely independent. Successive prices are completely independent of the past prices. Ye ho gaya weakly formed, weakly uh, efficient market. Now semi-strong form of ef uh, efficient market hypothesis. So in this form, that market absorbs quickly and efficiently not only the price information but also publicly available information. So a semi-strong market, effi uh, market efficiency says that market prices will absorb not only the past prices but also publicly available information at present. So khali past prices ke upar depend nahi karta. Balke market price depend karta publicly available information. The publicly available information are the uh, information which is provided by the companies in the form of profit and loss account, balance sheet, a number of other statements. These are publicly available information. So all these information will be reflected in the current market price. So the next one, last one is the strong form of EMH. <clears throat> the strong form of EMF. EMH. Under this hypothesis, markets are so perfect that all information including private information, insider information and unpublished data are reflected in the stock prices. So efficient market hypothesis is that market prices are considered inside information, publicly available information, past information all these information are reflected in the stock prices. This is called strong form of EMH. Yes, strong form of EMH is a uh, form of market efficiency where market price of share will absorb all types of information. But rarely this happens in the real practice. Practice may not happen in practice, it can't happen in where the complete market will absorb information ko absorb kare. Agar a strong form of market efficiency agar hai, to every investor will get same return. No investor will get above normal return. Kisi ko bhi zyada return nahi mil sakta, sab ko barabar return milega. To it's only a theoretical concept. To reality mein kya hoti hai? Reality mein market mein ya to weakly efficient market ho sakta, ya semi strong form of EMH ho sakta. But in strong form of EMH, it is very rarely found in the real practice. That's all. So in these two lectures, we have discussed about the introduction of the subject investment management. And this is very important from examination point of view for the students of BBA and MBA. In the coming video, we will discuss more about the other topics called fixed income securities, variable income securities, portfolio theory and mutual fund etc. We will discuss in the coming uh, videos. So I request to all my viewers to please subscribe my channel. 
click the bell icon so that you can get the notification of uh, my coming videos and these videos will be very much helpful to the students for preparing for the examination after listening the lecture i'll provide the description i'll provide in description about the details of the problems on investment management we'll try to solve the problems here in these videos so please please subscribe this and uh, tell to all your friends pass on this information link to all your friends so that it will be benefited to the more and more students thank you very much for watching see you again in the next video